After my recent review of the new Anycubic Tough Resin Ultra, I got asked whether the resin is precise. That is, can you rely on this resin to print with accurate results when dimensions matter? Well, you can see here that toughness is not in doubt. It's ultra tough. But let's take a closer look at precision. To do that, I've designed this small test model with some simple shapes that will be easy to measure, and you'll see the results in just a moment. It's not a super comprehensive test, and you might need more detail, but it should give us a good idea of how accurately this resin can print. For this test, I'll be using these uh, high quality Japanese made vernier calipers, which can measure down to 0.02 millimeters or 20 microns. I'll be printing the test model on my Anycubic Photon D2 DLP printer, which has an XY resolution of 51 microns, but it's a DLP. So the finished printed resolution is likely to be similar to that of an LCD printer with a smaller resolution, maybe down towards 30 microns. Look, I'm making a guess there based on the observation that the D2 produces prints, which I'd say are marginally better than the Mono X 6KS, which I have behind me, and that has an XY resolution of 34 microns. And the D2, well, it's a DLP. In any case, uh, 20 microns is smaller still, so we'll see how we go with this. The model is on a 50 by 50 millimeter base and has square, rectangular, and round shapes with the dimensions labeled on each one. Uh, there's also a thinner piece in the middle with a circle for internal round dimensions and a tiny one by one millimeter grid, which I'll come back to in just a moment. I'm printing this flat without supports and I'm therefore expecting some elephant's foot. So I won't be checking the 50 by 50 millimeter dimension. I've also printed two of these. There they are, so that I can see if there's any variation on either side of the build plate. The settings that I've used for this print are exactly as recommended by any cubic, and I've found these settings generally work really well, so I see no reason to change them. The resin is also quite viscous, and I'm performing this test on a cool day here in my workshop. So I've heated the chamber to 35 degrees to make sure that I'm printing within the specified temperature range. On previous prints, I've found that a bit warmer is a bit better, well, that's not very scientific. Anyway, now this is an analog device, so I'll need to rely on my eyes, uh, my glasses, and this magnifying glass to make sure that I'm getting the most accurate result that I can read. So let's see what we got. Overall, I was quite surprised at how accurate the results were. But of course, accuracy depends entirely on your application and acceptable tolerance. What we're looking for here is whole numbers, and I designed it that way on purpose so that the measurements that came out exactly correct would be easy to identify. And you can see that we have a few of those. I should also say that I had to be careful when taking these measurements because the resin is very flexible and you can easily compress it when grabbing it with the calipers. From these measurements, you can see that I was getting mostly between, well, zero and 0.1 millimeters accuracy with only one measurement coming in at 0.16 millimeters off. You'll notice that I also have two measurements for the round objects because I rotated them 90 degrees and took another reading because I wanted to see if there was any kind of weird egg-shaped thing going on. But like I said, overall, I think that's quite good for a resin that is so flexible and tough. And if you gave yourself a tolerance of say, 40 to 60 microns, well, then the numbers look even better. Now, about that grid I mentioned a minute ago, I can't measure the dimensions of those little one by one millimeter holes, but when I shine some light through it, you can see how it appears to have rendered those squares really nicely. For a really viscous resin, I think that's turned out really well. The other observation I had is that the base also printed very flat and straight, which again is positive for such a flexible resin. Now, if super accurate prints are your thing where the tolerance needs to be very, very small, then this might not be the right resin for you. And of course, this is a very simple and quick test. You might need much more thorough testing than this. But I hope this test has been helpful for you in gauging whether this resin could work for your projects. I'd also like to say that this video is not sponsored by any cubic. I did buy this resin myself, but if you are interested in making a purchase, then there are affiliate links in the description. And I'd like to say a big thanks to those people who have used those links. It really does help to support this channel so that I can test more resins like this one. Now, if you found this video helpful, then please give it a like, leave a comment and share it with someone who might be looking for a tough resin like Tough Resin Ultra. Oh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.